you know, there's a, a production efficiency that we use called ionophores. Yes. And that also improve, along with grain feeding versus grass feeding, all of those actually improve the, uh, or reduce the, the carbon footprint using those technologies. Carbon emissions uh, from, let's say, beef cattle production can, can come from, they come from fermentation processes, okay? But the, the magic of a ruminant, we, we talked about the superhero ruminants, uh, where they can convert fibrous products such as forages or, or co-products of other industries, which we use a lot of co-products from other industries, where we use corn to produce ethanol to blend in the fuel for vehicles, there's a byproduct called distiller's grains. Well, cattle can use that distiller's grains and rather than have a waste product that we have to land apply to get rid of it or put it in a landfill somewhere, right. we can take that and turn it into protein for human consumption. Well, the magic of the ruminant is the way they break down those co-products and fiber products is through a fermentation product, uh, process in their digestive tract. And in a ruminant, <coughs> uh, People like to say they have four stomachs, which is not exactly true, but we'll go with that. They have four compartments. <laughs> four compartments. Uh, the first two compartments, the rumen and the reticulum, are a large fermentation vat. And inside those two compartments, uh, in the uh, fluid material, the liquid material inside that, are millions of micro microbial organisms. Uh, various species that we don't even know. We're still discovering those in the days of molecular biology now that we can identify different species. And those microbial organisms ferment those feed products uh, and use that carbon and convert that carbon into energy sources that then are absorbed by the cattle to use to, to drive their own production. So, so when we think of a ruminant, the animal itself is not really digesting those feed products. The microbial population in the gut is fermenting those products and creating end products that are then utilized by the animal itself the as nutrients in the other two compartments of the stomach. <laughs> well, in that fermentation process, the Unlike alcohol production, which alcohol is a fermentation process, microorganisms, yeast, ferments, carbon sources, and convert those into alcohol or ethanol. Uh -huh. In the rumen, the microbial organisms convert into what are called volatile fatty acids. And these are little short chain fatty acids. Uh, the primary three would be acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Acetate is a two carbon fatty acid, propionate is a three carbon fatty acid, and butyrate is a four carbon fatty acid. So if we think about glucose, which glucose is the building unit of starch, or glucose is the building unit of cellulose, cellulose being the primary carbohydrate in our fibers, the microorganisms that, that primarily ferment uh, cellulose, or the glucose and cellulose, the predominant fatty acid produced in that fermentation is called acetate. Well, if you take a glucose molecule, which has six carbons, mm -hmm. and you break that down into the fatty acids that are produced by the microbes, well, you're taking six carbons and you're converting it into primarily two carbon fatty acids, acetate. Well, in that process, you end up with an extra carbon floating around, and that carbon produces methane. It's a hydrogen sink, meaning that it takes hydrogen out of that fermentation process and hooks it to that carbon molecule and sinks the hydrogen, methane. and it like produces methane. So methane's what, one carbon and four hydrogens? One carbon and four hydrogens. So that produces methane, and, and also carbon dioxide is produced in that fermentation process. So when we have a high forage diet or high fiber diet, we have methane and carbon dioxide production because of the stoichiometry of, those, of that fermentation process. <clears throat> if we take starch. Which is corn, so we're talking about grass versus corn. Yeah, now we're talking, you know, cellulose, which is in grass and forages, 
versus starch, which is in things like corn or, or sorghum or, or wheat or barley, uh, the starch, <coughs> a different set of microbes <coughs> ferment the starch in the, in the compartments of the, of, the rum, of the ruminant animal. <coughs> And those microbes in their fermentation process, <coughs> they still produce acetate, <coughs> but they produce more of the, of the three carbon fatty acid called propionate. So you shift the proportion of those fatty acids. Well, when you take that six carbon glucose molecule again, <coughs> and you convert it into propionate, which are three carbons, you don't have any methane production or you have less methane production because of that extra carbon's not floating around. <coughs> And so, and that the hydrogen <coughs> right. And so, in the end, as you feed a starchy feed such as corn or wheat versus a fibrous feed such as hay, you increase the amount of propionate produced in the fermentation process. You decrease the amount of acetate produced in the fermentation process, and in the meantime, you reduce the amount of methane that's produced and as we call it, eructated, or as they, burst, uh, or as they belch, belch, as they belch, <laughs> they're belching out less gas. And so as we move to a, a starchy type diet, or what we'll call a concentrate diet, with more grain in it, we reduce the amount of methane that's produced by the animal. So that's in the grain feeding. And you mentioned the ionophores, yeah. uh, which are, uh, <coughs> basically they're an antimicrobial and they work inside the compartments of the, of the stomach of the ruminant and they shift the microbial population inside that rumen where you have more of the organisms that produce pro more propionate and <coughs> fewer of the organisms that produce the acetate. And so using that feed additive, <coughs> we shift that fermentation process, produce more propionate, less acetate, and we reduce methane production at the same time. <coughs> So using that type of technology, we reduce the amount of methane production. And also from an animal production standpoint, when we reduce methane production, that carbon is being captured by the animal as an energy source and they become more efficient. So they produce more product on less feed because that carbon is not being lost in the form of methane. It's, it's uh, being captured by the animal in the form of the volatile fatty acids. So it makes, it's a win-win because it makes it the animal more efficient so, so, and also produces less greenhouse gas. That's right, we can produce, <coughs> we produce more product on less feed and we're, uh, produce, and we're reducing the carbon footprint because we have less methane emissions in the, from the animal itself in that process. I'll give you an example, let's take a, 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 a a calf that was grazing out on a grazing environment as an example. And so, and I want to use that grazing environment because again, that's the environment where they're consuming more fibrous feeds that would be a, have a tendency to have more acetate production and therefore more methane production. When we use an ionophore in that type of production system, if we look at weight gain by the animals, the animals will typically when we use an ionophore in the production system versus no ionophore, so this is even on grass. This is out. This is out in grazing situation. We will see a, a one tenth to two tenths of a pound increase in the, in the average daily gain of the animal. So the baseline might might be on wheat pasture. Your baseline average daily gain might be two pounds a day. When we introduce the ionophore into the production system, that animal may be gaining 2.1 to 2.2 pounds a day on the same, consuming the same amount of forage. So that's that 10% increase. That's that 10% increase that you'll see. And that's again, that's where by using that to alter the fermentation process inside those compartments of the ruminant digestive tract, we capture that carbon and we reduce methane emissions from the animal and that carbon is being used as an energy source by the animal.